What's going on guys, Cryo here, bringing you another Beta Shadowlands Dungeon Overview. This time we're taking a look at the highly anticipated Plague Fall. As always, checking out notable trash mobs and boss mechanics. Let's get it. On your way to the first boss, you will encounter a fork in the road. As it stands, taking the right path is far more preferred, so obviously we are going left first. Plague Borer, a pretty easy mob to deal with as long as the tanks maintain aggro and remain in melee range of them. They will deal minor physical damage with boar flesh, but keep an eye out for rolling plague. The borer will roll or charge at a target, dealing nature damage along the way. Fen Hornet will periodically cast Fen Stinger dealing a burst of damage and poisoning its target for 6 seconds. This is not interruptible, but you can stun or displace the mob. Hatchling Nest This is the main reason players skip this path. These nests will continuously spout out fen hatchlings and unstable larvae. The fen hatchlings die rather quick, but should they live long enough they will infest players with clinging infestation. Targets will be covered in bugs and should jump to remove them. Unstable Larva will only cast Larva Bomb. This is depicted by a large green swirly that players should not stand in. The Decaying Flesh Giant. This monstrosity can up the difficulty of your pulls really quickly, so you can wait for him to pat completely by, or wait until he is in the middle of the path and pull him alone. Party members will want to interrupt creepy crawlers. Like it sounds, this mob will spawn spiders. With target caps and AoE threat being an issue, Try to prevent this as often as possible. If you look closely, you will notice toxic pools dropping off the giant. Solid rule of thumb in this dungeon, if it's green and not a druid's efflorescence or a shaman's spirit link totem, do not stand in it. If you were to start off on the right path instead, you'll be faced with Mire Soldier. These little mushroom guys will melee tanks with mighty swing. Nothing too scary. Fungal Mancer. This mushroom requires more attention players will want to interrupt casts of Wondergrow ASAP. If successful, this will buff all nearby enemies with a 15% damage increase. The second ability to look out for is Binding Fungus. This channeled ability will root targets and cannot be interrupted, however you can stop it with a stun or displacement. Fungi Stormer. These dual wielding mushrooms will continuously cast Fungi Storm, a flurry-like whirlwind ability that deals physical damage. You can stun or displace it, or just simply move out of it. Pestilent Harvester, our final mushroom mob here, will have two main abilities. Pearl Spores applies a nature dot to the target, but it can be interrupted. Doomshroom cannot be interrupted in the traditional way, and should this cast complete, a giant mushroom will sprout up and begin to explode. Move out of the obvious green swirlies. Gushing Slime, depending on the level of difficulty dungeon you are attempting, it may not be wise to pull all of these slimes at once. They will inflict nature damage to everyone within 10 yards every one second. Furthermore, upon death, the slimes will explode and leave behind toxic pools, so watch your feet. Plague Belcher Players will want to dodge the Belch Plague ability. This is a frontal cone that deals heavy nature damage. Tanks will want to keep an eye out for the ad spawned from Beckon Slime. If the slimes reach the Belcher, they will be consumed, healing the Belcher for a portion of his health. These slimes can be rooted, slowed, stunned, and banished, which is good practice for the first boss. Our first boss is Glob Grog. This encounter is certainly interesting, I really enjoy the concept, but the execution could use some tweaking. If you want to hear me rant more about Shadowlands Dungeons, be sure to stop by the stream sometime. But anyways, onto the mechanics. The entire party will need to position themselves semi-close to the boss. This is for two reasons. The first reason is Plague Stomp. Globgrog will slam his foot down, dealing a burst of physical damage, knock players backwards, and apply debilitating plague. This dot will reduce players' movement speed by 30% and deal ticking nature damage. This can and should be dispelled. You will want to remove this as soon as you can because shortly after the stomp, Globgrog will cast Slime Wave. This frontal cone is huge and will not only deal deadly damage, but if you survive you will be rooted in place and suffer additional nature damage for 6 seconds. I recommend staying fairly close to the boss, even as a ranged player. You do not want to start off too far away, 
get hit by the knockback and then it'd be impossible to dodge slime wave. There are no tank busters, but that does not mean you can sleep on this one, tanks. Upon reaching 100 energy, the boss will beckon slime, similar to the Plague Belcher. The tiny morsels will slowly creep towards the boss and you do not want him to consume these. Globgrog will feast upon any slime which reaches him, healing him for 300% of the slime's remaining health. So wake up tanks and be ready to kite this big guy around. On that note, the slimes can spawn from all different directions, so if your group can, try to gather them up and keep them slowed or rooted. This boss likes to stop and cast frequently, making it a nightmare to kite. On Mythic difficulty and higher, Globgrog will also beckon a slimy smorgasbord. This is a much larger slime with a lot more health, so you can assume what happens should it reach the boss. Luckily, this mob is also susceptible to CC, and you will likely see groups ignoring this mob entirely, making it much easier to kite Globgrog around the little slimes. The TLDR for this fight is to move in close to the boss as soon as Plague Stomp happens to avoid being too far away and unable to move out of Slime Wave. Ensure you are killing all the little slime adds before they reach the boss, and tanks help your group out by kiting Globgrog around. Healers will want to dispel Debilitating Plague as soon as you can focusing on slower players first. On Mythic difficulty and higher, practice CCing the large slime if your DPS is strong enough to push the boss before too many of them spawn. On your way to the second boss, you will encounter another fork in the road. Again, which side you choose does not matter until we start talking about the Mythic Plus best practices. Blighted Spinebreaker. The two main abilities to watch out for here is Festering Belch, a frontal cone dealing heavy nature damage while knocking players back, and jagged spines. Spikes erupt under players' feet, telegraphed by a ground effect. These spikes will deal nature damage and knock players upward. You will notice that the spine breakers are buffed with slime injected, and upon death, the mob expels green ooze for each application applied. These oozes will begin to cast metamorphosis immediately. Players can DPS them down, or more simply, just run over them. If they are allowed to complete their cast, the oozes will transform into Rot Marrow Slimes. These slimes are extremely annoying, so do your best to squish them when you can. Rot Marrow Slimes deal AoE damage with Gushing Slime and apply stacking dots of corrosive gunk to players within 10 yards. These slimes will also explode upon death, leaving behind toxic pools. Rotting Slime Claw These will melee with corroded claws, not only dealing nature damage on impact, but also reducing player stats by 5% for 30 seconds. This will stack. Now I want to mention real quick the unstable canister. Although nerfed, these barrels explode dealing AoE damage to players and enemies alike. It may not eliminate a pack for you completely like it did before, but it is still free damage if utilized properly. Whittle the barrel's health down to 1, then root and or stun enemies inside its explosion radius. Plague Rock. Groups can skip most of these birds, but should you pull them, Blight Beak is the main ability dealing heavy physical damage. Tanks will want to pick these up quickly. Everyone will want to dodge the second ability, Wing Buffet. This is a frontal cone ability that will deal significant damage while knocking players back. If you head left, you will encounter a Plague Binder. Pestilent Bolt is their generic spell cast that deals minor nature damage. You can interrupt these if you want. Gripping Infection targets a random enemy, inflicting nature damage every 2 seconds and rooting them for 6 seconds. This you should probably most definitely interrupt. If you go right, you will encounter Pestilence Slime. This particular slime will mainly cast Viral Globs, hurling slime globs at random players that deal nature damage. This is interruptible. When this mob dies, it will leave behind a red pool, increasing haste by 25%, but deals ticking nature damage every 2 seconds. This does affect enemies as well, so tanks be sure not to linger too long. Rigged Plague Borer will melee the tank and periodically cast Wretched Phlegm. This will inflict nature damage and reduce movement speed by 65% for 6 seconds. Upon death, these mobs will explode. This ability is highly telegraphed via a large green swirly and a time bomb animation. Do yourself a favor and move out of it before it goes off. Where the paths converge, you will notice a patrolling mob accompanied by a congealed slime. This is the worst slime in this dungeon. 
First thing to note is the aura they have. This aura will cause other mobs around it to take reduced damage. If you can, keep the slime away from other mobs with CC or burn it quickly. Second, these slimes will cast Withering Filth, causing the slime to lunge at a player, inflicting nature damage and reducing haste by 45% to all players within 5 yards of the impact. If you are targeted, move away from your friends. It's best to pull this patrol before engaging the larger group. Fun fact, as of now, you can skip these next few mobs by running around them, but in case you don't... Slime Tentacle Players will want to ensure that someone is always within melee range of the tentacle to prevent cast of Vile Spit. This will deal heavy nature damage and leaves a nasty dot. Ideally, you will want the tanks to be the closest due to crushing embrace. The tentacle will pick up its prey and deal physical damage every one second for 10 seconds. Rigged Plague Borers will be continuously running into the group. Do your best not to kill them in awkward places. Virulax Blightweaver. This mini boss of sorts will cast the generic Pestilence Bolt. Kick as many as you can. Wasting Blight targets random players and will deal some nature damage, but also reduces the target's haste by 50%. Obliterating Ooze is a large AoE burst dealing nature damage to anyone within 10 yards. This is an obvious large green animation, making it very easy to dodge. These next few trash packs are repeat mobs, but it is important to note that the boss will be leaping around the room in a counterclockwise fashion. Be on the lookout for him while pulling. The platform you see us pulling to here is always safe, meaning the boss will never leap here. Ranged interrupts and grips are your friends. For the last pack, it is best to drag the mobs up the stairs a bit while you dispatch of them. This way, you will not pull the boss prematurely should he leap back before you are finished. Dr. Ickis. This boss will either remind you why you play a mobile class, or make you want to. As we saw previously, this boss loves to leap around and continues to do so throughout the fight. There are a few moving parts during this encounter, so let's begin. Tanks, there is a tank buster of sorts. Slime Injection. Dr. Ickis infects the tank, inflicting nature damage and applying a dot lasting one minute. This effect does stack. This should be dispelled ASAP, for when removed, this aura spawns an erupting ooze for each stack applied. This ooze should be stepped on, and in doing so will cause it to burst, but only inflicting damage to the player who squished it. As mentioned before, the boss will randomly leap to another platform, and on said platform there will be a cauldron. Dr. Ickis will throw in a concoction and spawn a plague bomb. Players will want to focus this down first, as it will deal massive nature damage to everyone, likely resulting in a wipe. On Mythic difficulty and higher, Dr. Ickis also spawns a congealed contagion. Remembering that these slimes reduce damage taken of other mobs by 75%, tanks will want to do their best to keep it away from the plague bomb for as long as possible. This may be difficult, since simultaneously Dr. Ickis will be leaping to the furthest target with his Slime Lunge ability. Targeted players will want to move away from the impact area or risk taking heavy physical damage and being knocked back. Also also on Mythic difficulty and higher, upon landing Dr. Ickis will radiate slime waves in four directions. Make sure you are more than three yards away from the impact site and dodge the wave. As an added bonus for tanks, once Dr. Ickis is done leaping around, he will stand still and repeatedly cast Burning Strain. Dr. Ickis infects all players, inflicting nature damage on impact and applies a dot dealing damage every 1 second for 10 seconds when not engaged in melee combat. This effect does stack. Groups will want to ensure someone is always within melee range, but remember slime injection can hurt, so ideally the tank should do it. Last tidbit regarding Congealed Contagion, this mob will also continue to cast Withering Filth, making it that much more difficult to keep it away from the Plague Bomb, but your party can and should use stuns, roots, snares, and knockbacks. The TLDR for this boss fight is to dispel stacks of slime injection early to prevent multiple oozes, and step on said oozes when they spawn. Focus down the Plague Bomb first, followed by the Congealed Slime, all while dodging Dr. Ickes' Slime Lunge. Always have someone, preferably the tank, within melee distance of the boss to prevent casts of Burning Strain. Mm -hmm. 
On your way to the third boss, you will encounter Defender of Many Eyes. Bulwark of Maldraxxus is a very obvious shield ability that reduces damage taken by 90%. This does apply to players as well, although this can and should probably just be interrupted with a stun or displacement. They also have a shield bash ability that will deal physical damage and interrupt. Venomous Sniper If you can, engage this mob before it summons its Venom Fang pet. It will attempt to summon one regardless, but this cast can be interrupted. These snipers will also cast Venom Piercer, a volley of venom in a frontal cone, not only dealing damage, but also causing any player struck to take 100% increased nature damage for 8 seconds. This can be stopped with a stun or displacement. Should a Venom Fang be summoned, it is just additional melee damage that the tank has to deal with. Brood Ambusher This large spider person will have camouflage, making it appear invisible until it is actually pulled. As the name suggests, this spider will ambush its target, leaping behind them, dealing damage. This seems to have a splash effect. The two major abilities to be on the lookout for is Enveloping Web and Stealthling. The web is a channeled ability that will root players for 6 seconds. You can stop this with a stun or displacement. Stealthlings are a bit more deadly. The ambusher will essentially throw a bunch of tiny spiders in a random location. Upon landing, they will cast camouflage and become invisible. Players will want to run to where they were thrown and AoE. This will break their camo. Now, with the camo gone, you will see that the stealthlings are channeling their own ambush. Should this complete, they will leap to a random target and inflict physical damage. As you can see, multiple stealthlings can choose the same target, resulting in a quick death. These mobs are susceptible to roots and snares, so abilities like Shockwave, Ursul's Vortex, and Spear of Bastion are great. Drop them right before the ambush goes off to keep the spiders at bay. Our third boss is Domina Venomblade. This encounter can be quite confusing for some players, especially early on. There is a tank buster. Domina slashes her current target, inflicting physical damage and applying a toxin, increasing the tank's nature damage taken by 100% for 8 seconds. This needs to be dispelled ASAP. The party will want to watch out for Shadow Ambush. This will mark a target depicted by a purple circle, and this player will want to move out before the effect ends because Domina will appear behind them and stun them or anyone within 10 yards for 3 seconds. Now on Mythic difficulty and higher, players will not want to be too spread unless they are stepping out for Shadow Ambush because of Solitary Prey. Domina preys upon isolated players who are not within 6 yards of another ally. You will gain a debuff that lasts 10 seconds. If you do not reset this by moving near an ally, you will be encased in a web wrap. This wrap will stun you until it is destroyed. Once Domina reaches 100 energy, she orders Brood Assassins concealed in Shroud Web to join the fight. Brood Assassins cast Assassinate, dealing nature damage and applying a dot until they are revealed from stealth. In order to reveal the Assassins, players must AoE on top of the webs. You can run on the webs, but your movement speed will be slowed by 70%. And as you can see, simply running over the webs is not enough. An AoE ability must be used to break them out. Once they are revealed, tanks pick them up and deal with the additional incoming physical damage. The TLDR for this fight? Be sure to dispel Cytotoxin off the tank as quickly as possible. Remain stacked up for the majority of the fight, moving out only if you are targeted by Shadow Ambush. When Brood Assassins join the fray, quickly AoE their webs to break them out of stealth and to reduce the amount of damage going out. Keep an eye on players who may get web wrapped and break their stun as soon as you can. On our way to the final boss, we will encounter Plaguebound Devoted. Do not be fooled by these boogermen. These small mobs will slowly walk towards whoever has the most threat. If you let them get within melee range, they will punch you extremely hard and it is likely you will die before you realize what is happening. It is best for tanks to snag aggro on them as best they can and let range players whittle them down. The larger mobs will deal moderate physical damage and move at regular speeds, but these can be face tanked. Icker Bioflesh This mob will cast the generic Pestilence Bolt, feel free to interrupt it. The Bioflesh will also cast Oozing Carcass. This is what turns the little boogermen into larger boogermen. 
Finally, Icker Bioflesh will ghost step to a random location around the room. Although it is not very random as it seems he always goes to the back right pack and then to the left pack. Our final boss, Margrave Stradama, will spawn as soon as the room trash is cleared, so mind your position if you do not wish to pull early. This fight essentially has two phases, one where Margrave is present and one where she submerges. Let's talk about while she is present. First things first, someone must always be in melee range. Like most immobile bosses, she will cast a deadly ability that will wipe the group if you are too far away. This is Plague Rot. This dot inflicts damage every 1 second for 30 seconds and stacks. There is not a tank buster per se, however Margrave will summon a malignant spawn. The malignant spawn will cast Touch of Slime, slamming the ground inflicting nature damage to players within 4 yards of the impact. This is not split, so there is no need for everyone to get hit by it. However, if this attack does not hit any players, it inflicts a deadly amount of nature damage to the entire party. Tanks should be the only players standing inside it, though in most groups you will see everyone stacked due to the next mechanic, Plague Crack. Giant booger tentacles will spawn in a certain pattern and after a few seconds slam into the ground dealing heavy nature damage to anyone struck. Avoid these at all costs. Throughout the fight, the boss will also cast Infectious Rain. This torrent of plague deals damage every 2 seconds for 6 seconds, coating all players in filth, applying a disease that deals additional nature damage for 6 seconds. This can be dispelled to manage stacks. Now, upon reaching 66 and 33% health, Margrave will sink beneath the slime in the center of the room. The main objective in this phase is to successfully dodge booger tentacles. On Mythic difficulty and higher, Margrave will additionally summon Plaguebound Devoted during this phase. Keep in mind that they move very very slow and can be CC'd, but still hit ridiculously hard. Ranged should take care of them whilst dodging the slams. It is important to note that after 33%, these Devoted mobs will continuously spawn until Margrave is defeated. As if that's not bad enough, after 33%, Margrave will no longer summon malignant spawns, but you will have to deal with the booger tentacle dance. This is why it may behoove your party to use Lust here as opposed to on the pull. Quick additional notes on the tentacle slam dance. Every pattern will result in a total of 10 slams. There are 3 set patterns, though their direction and in which order they spawn can vary. As long as you react quickly, you should have ample time to get to the safe spot. Pattern 1. 5 synchronized tentacles slam in an every other fashion, followed by the remaining 5 synchronized slams. This is the easiest to dodge by far since it is a simple sidestep. Hey what's going on everybody, Cryo here with a quick amendment. There's actually 4 patterns with the slime tentacle dance. A 6 and 4 pattern. 6 tentacles will spawn parallel to each other with 2 openings on the end, then followed by 4 tentacles filling in those spaces. This one is fairly easy to dodge as you just move into the empty space first, as soon as the first six slam move into their position after. Pattern 2. One tentacle will slam first, followed by the remaining nine tentacles simultaneously. The best way to dodge this is by standing next to the tentacle that spawned first. As soon as its slam animation is over, move into the area since it will not slam again. Pattern 3. This is by far the hardest depending on where the first one spawns in relation to your location in the room. One by one, the tentacles will spawn and slam in a clockwise or counterclockwise fashion. This pattern is quick and ensuing tentacles will not wait for the one prior. The best way to dodge during this pattern is to again locate the first tentacle and see which direction the others are going. This way, you can mosey on over to where the final slam will occur and have ample time to move into where the first slam happened before the rest of the slams reach you. The TLDR for this fight, ensure at least one person, preferably the tank, is standing inside the malignant spawn's touch of slime and within melee range of the boss. Everyone should do their best to dodge tentacles and healers be ready to pump during infectious rain casts. Deal with the summoned adds accordingly and have fun.
Well, that's it for this guide, and I want to thank each and every one of you for stopping by. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up, as it's the easiest way to provide me feedback. Of course, any additional feedback, questions, concerns can be left in the comment section down below, or feel free to join my Discord, link in description. Until next time, guys, stay frosty.